Hey guys, today, why I have what I have, the evolution of my systems, both of them, and um, how I got here, lessons that were learned. Stay tuned, that might help you. Hey guys, got a bunch of questions via email and uh, comments on, on the videos here on, on why I did what I did and why I got here, okay? So what I thought I'd do today is do a little bit of um, reminisce on, on my other systems, how I started and all that so that you can learn from my mistake and maybe those mistakes are not mistakes for you, right? Because at the end of the day, not everything works for everybody and some things you're comfortable with some things you're less comfortable with all right so if you look at uh, this picture over here uh, so this is my first system okay this was you know uh, five gallon buckets from home depot right and um, i used if you look carefully at the bottom there of, of um, you know where, where today i put this uh, uh, bulkhead fitting right if you look carefully at the, at the five gallon buckets, I used just a rubber grommet, okay? Uh, and that worked very, really well. Uh, the reason it worked really well is because I wasn't containing water in this. All I was doing was flowing water in because it was a dirt bucket system, right? right? So water was coming in and just coming out. There was no, uh, you know, column of uh, water that was pressuring, uh, you know, um, the seal or anything so was I losing some drops of water every now and then yes I was but you know given 30 30 odd gallons of uh, solution that didn't matter that much right so if you look also carefully instead of having a uh, more like well you look at the delivery system it, it was a drip system so it just you know it, it did the trick uh, also look at the perlite that i was using so the perlite the drip and the way it was um, all uh, draining all of that worked well together just not efficient enough for me so anyway so i, th I started tinkering a little bit more um, if you look at the second system right i was using as a delivery system these this thing Okay, so I had a valve that I could control every single one of my, uh, of my bucket with, all right? Because one of the things uh, that I uh, kind of ran into with the drip is that since I couldn't control everything, the first bucket was getting more solution than the last one, just because of the pressure, you know how it goes, okay? So uh, I didn't have a pressure equally, a equalizing uh, dripper. I was just letting the water flow through the, the, the little uh, quarter inch pipe, you know, as, the, as it came, all right? Uh, this changed a lot of things because when I started using that, and actually for this one, the original one, it was built on the wall there. The one you see in the picture was, is, was at the bottom there of the greenhouse, okay? So it's inverted compared to this one. Um, and th so when it was on this wall, it was on the wall and it was just dripping in over there it became a just drop it over you know each bucket and do your thing right so you see that the the old drainage hasn't changed you know i still have the old pipe right so just with a little the uh, hole that could accept you know the draining of each of the bucket all right what's really kind of cool about the whole thing is that it it's all using this the same bucket you know and and i'll go a little further when i talk to you about my deep water system you know putting that bulkhead fitting at the bottom uh enabled a lot of of good stuff to happen because now this can hold water okay as opposed to just you know preventing a big leak which the grommets were doing okay yeah, so the evolution went from the five bucket system to the cat litter bucket, 
right? Those are like four or something, okay? Um, and from there, I did this one. Now, the Dutch bucket system, a couple of drawback that I found myself, all right? And again, that's not everybody's experience. Every, you know, I, I've seen a lot of people having really good uh, success with that. For me, all right, the drainage through this half-inch pipe, right, was too small, all right? Meaning that because the flow of water was always from the top all the way to that single point of exit at the bottom of the, of the bucket, right, the roots would end up growing in there and clogging this. I had a big clog on, on, on I'm pointing to this bucket, not this one, but the one that was the third one at the time and created, you know, I lost the plant basically because I tried to unclog it, right? Because I figured out that it was the roots. You can't really take the plant out of there, you kill it. So I tried to pull the roots out, do something, but that ended up shocking the plant and, you know, that plant was done. Nothing good happened after that. So, so that was kind of not good. Um, also what happened is that as the flow was reducing, I had to let less nutrient come in because it couldn't get out fast enough and the buckets would fill up and overflow, right? So I was always tinkering with the, with the flow and everything, uh, make it a little longer because I couldn't put as much solution at, at all at once. Anyway, just eye maintenance, you know? This ebb and flow system that I've been running for three years now, solved a lot of these things okay because instead of running something through it you know that i have to adjust and, and and mess with all the time this one just floods and and goes right and again look at the how i built it and why and why not and and, and you'll understand uh, all all i'm saying here. but solves that issue the fact that it floods and then comes back it doesn't end up clogging the the filters the but not the filters the the adapters here so a lot less maintenance you know it's a win for me so i like that so that was kind of the evolution of the dirge bucket system that i used initially to this now system part two of these buckets being the way they are you know with that uh, that thing at the bottom there i was able over here to build a deep water system, a deep water culture system, it's called. So essentially, I use this feature here, this this thing. Uh, v, uh, you know, see the picture there. Um, so I had ten buckets, all L, uh, nine buckets, eight with stuff that was growing in it, and at the very end, I had the fill bucket. And what it, what it is is simply a bucket that has the same uh, bottom there, but no plants were growing it. So all I had to do was open the top, fill it with solution, and I knew that the level of that bucket, because they were all connected, was the, buck the level of all the other buckets, okay? So, yeah, because normally a deep water system, you see that in, um, you know, uh, a bigger kind of situation, you know, uh, wh whether you have uh, floating rafts or things like that. So this, this system I liked a lot. I was growing peppers in it mostly, one eggplant that, you know, you see the picture. And yeah, we had, I think, five big, big, big eggplant. But, you know, so that was what was happening here. Why did I replace that system with this is because it is because of production, right? So if you think about it, I was producing a ton of peppers, a couple of eggplants, sure. But the problem was that they were all getting ready at the same time. So how do you eat, you know, I don't know, 30 pounds of pepper? Because they are already kind of at the same time. Uh, so to me, that was a problem. Um, we have a bunch still frozen. Um, so this system here, we eat a lot of lettuce. So I thought that this would be producing much more vegetable that I can control the uh, production of, right? So as you see, you know, three, two, four, five weeks, okay? So they're all different stage, all different size. We eat them, right? So, and that's throughout the summer. Whereas the other one, I would look, maintain, 
plain whatever and then at the end of the summer i'd have a production of something to eat you know a little bit like tomatoes over here although tomatoes because i don't have the same uh, the same variety you know i'm able to control a little bit when they'll be ready and i and i have production throughout the summer but not all of the same plant but whatever that's that so yeah so that deep water system i was using three inch pots okay um, and just a little trick for you you can have a three inch pot that looks like this or one that looks like this right so the plant become heavy and having this three inch pot and all you do is you drill the hole in the top right so in the same manner i drilled these um these all over here just a bigger bit right three hole three inch hole and you drop that in the middle of the of the bucket like like you see um the bigger lip allowed for the pot to not sink in because some of these plants got to a size that probably the plant was seven ten pounds maybe 12. i mean the eggplant was probably closer to the 15 pound mark and that pushed that cup the first year through the top of the of the hole it was not enough you know it was just bending the big lip solved that right they're a little bit more expensive but as you can see that's been used and reused and you reuse you know it's these you can reuse um, um very well actually all right all right and in the deep water system right i used an air pump that you see right here right with a uh, little silicon uh, tubing and i would put one of these which is one of those um uh, aquarium uh, bubbler you know you put there and it just and i put one of in each of the bucket to provide the oxygen because as you know plant needs nutrient they need light and they need oxygen to grow and that's what was providing that to the deep water system right down here all right in between the system here and i don't have a great picture of it so look carefully right in between each one of these plants i add a five two inch crack key system so what it was so the crack key system is basically a great system for beginners all right you fill the bucket with solution and you drop these things just so that they barely uh, touch the solution so basically do the holes do that and 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 fill it until you see the water there that's how you kind of how you do it and then you drop your uh, little rock rock wool in there with your plants and and they will grow okay so i had i had 15 well grow grow sites okay so three buckets with five of those things in it you know and, and the two others like like here and here okay and i was growing kale and spinach and those kinds of things in it it worked relatively well okay um the problem not the problem i mean so so if you think about what this is okay the crack key you fill it with the solution okay and as the plants uh consume the nutrient and the water air gets built here so basically the level of the of the nutrient solution drops and more air becomes available to the root so as the plant grows it gets the air it needs so it's kind of a self-contained low maintenance kind of system pretty nifty but the not the the problem but the key to a system like this is to uh, size it right okay because if your plants don't have enough solution to reach maturity you're done because if you refill it, then you're just killing your plant because you just um, uh, removed the source of air, right, uh, for the roots. That's why you don't see a bucket this size grow a tomato because it wouldn't have enough for the lifetime, the lifespan of the of the plant wouldn't have enough containment of, of things. So anyway, um, if you look online, you know, on YouTube, you know, some of my colleagues have produced tomato out of a crack key system, but the bucket they use is either a 55 gallon bucket or in certain case when the plant is a little smaller and i'm pointing at my trash can down there a 32 33 gallon trash can but that's like uh six seven times the, the size of this you know uh because that's uh four gallons so so sizing a crack key system right is, is the key to make it a, to make it work correctly and 
In my case, the five leafy grain that I was uh, uh, growing in this worked well. But again, I had 15 sides to grow them. Compared to this system here where I have 16 in each of the growth roth and I have like 72, I think, in, in this one, which is which takes the little one until I pop it, pop it in, in, into the, the, growth, uh, the growing uh, ones. So this is a lot more efficient uh, a system to produce those greens. So that's why the Kratky went and it was replaced by this for leafy green. And again, the the other the deep water culture that I had down here for the pepper, well, it took room. And if you look at the, that other picture there, uh, you can see that with everything in this in this small greenhouse. We couldn't move without breaking something and that that is not right for <laughs> me there's maintenance that has to be done you have to move around you have to do your thing and it wouldn't let me with all the stuff i had to do all right so um so that's where we're, that's where we are today i would say it the the greenhouse looks cleaner there's not not a whole lot going on in there but i will tell you that i've already produced more stuff to eat just with this system that everything combined I've done so far and then we're just uh, we're what we're not even the 4th of July or we're, we're at the end of June okay so this has been producing mad 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 okay to the point where I'm I'm, I'm slowing down uh, production here. so you say I only have eight new seedlings here as opposed to the 16 and as opposed to the other ones you know it's just too much food <laughs> right so, all right, uh, what would I have done differently? If I wanted to keep my dirge bucket going, I probably would replace these things for, instead of half inch, I'd probably go to a full one inch, okay? That way, if I do have uh, uh, roots or anything going through it, it won't affect the flow and it won't affect, um, yeah, and it won't clog, right? So I would do that. If I was doing a dirge bucket system, I'd go bigger than half inch. Um, I mean, obviously, the two-inch pipe to to do uh, to do the drainage is, is plenty, plenty to to take whatever is coming out. Um, I still would have the problem with the feeding of them. I might uh, go back to a drip system, but with emitter that I can that can control the pressure, so that way I can just pressurize the system and and put a couple of you know, let's say uh, one gallon an hour drip emitter that are, that are pressure controlled, so that way this is this is two gallon and that one will also be two gallon. You know what I mean? Because that was a big problem trying to make trying to bring the food to each one of the bucket over a pipe. You know. So I would do that if I did that. Um, the Kratky, I'm not going to do again just because it's too, um, you know, it's great for beginner. It's great actually for an apartment um, uh, uh, patio, patio, you know, you can, you can just put your thing, leave it out there and you're good. But a system like this, now that I have one, um, it's far, far exceeds the production you can get out of that. So that's why. That's why I wouldn't do Kratky again, because well, but it was a good stepping stone for me. You know, I learned from this. Um, what else? The deep water system. Um, the reason I won't do it is because it's it takes too much room in the greenhouse, and it uh, pro it produces a lot of vegetable, but just at one point in time, right? It's for bigger um, bigger crop, okay? But you know, this for me is why this space where it was created this will sustain us for the whole you know probably well into i want to say november i will still produce lettuce in because uh, this is like a two membrane uh, greenhouse so it's well insulated uh, not that it's heated or anything but because it's next to a building it doesn't get kind of the full brunt of the of the cold you know so i'm pretty sure i'll be i'll be good here until november one thing I may want to mention to you between this system here that has the container out, out, of, um, out of soil, basically compared to this one that I buried, okay? When, <clears throat> when the greenhouse gets uh, warm, it warms this liquid up uh, quite a bit, okay? The letters don't seem to mind right now because it's kind of shady and it's kind of okay, but 
when you bury it, the uh, well, it's obviously more permanent. So what I was doing with it, trying to remove it and do all of that in my maintenance video, you can't do it with a with a bucket that you bury in the ground. But the ground actually tempers the temperature of the of the solution, so it never gets really warm because it's it's, it's buried, you know, two feet in the ground. So that's a good good uh, thing to do. Um, Another good thing to do with those yellow buckets, and I talk about it in my, uh, in my maintenance video again, painting the bucket black, okay, is, is, is really good uh, because it uh, controls all the algae production, you know. Uh, that's evolution after, what, eight, nine years of, of doing this and trying stuff. I mean, do it yourself. It's a, it's a ton of fun. It doesn't take too, too much. Obviously, it's this, this system built up over time, right? But if you look at my original system with the, with the um, uh, five gallon bucket, it doesn't take a whole lot of room. It just takes a wall, right? It wasn't in a greenhouse and it still produced really well, you know? Um, I have the luxury of the greenhouse right now, you know, because I made, I made that. And all right, guys, I hope this was informative and uh, you like where, where this came from. I mean, at the end of the day, take ideas. That's all this is, you know, it's ideas. Try them for yourself. They work for you? Good. You know, if they don't, this is why I did some of the adjustment I made, you know, but do your own research, do your own experiments and yeah, have fun with it. You know, at the end of the day, that's what we do this for. All right. Thank you guys. Give me a like and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.